Patient safety is a global health priority that requires urgent action from countries, from institutions, and from providers. Each summit which was organized by Patient Safety Movement Foundation actually spearheaded a global patient safety movement which has gone from strength to strength. We know how to get to zero. First, do no harm. To make that happen, we need to implement and follow guidelines that are evidence-based with a proven track record for eliminating patient harm. The vast majority of harm, somebody knows something's wrong, but they weren't listened to or didn't feel comfortable speaking up. We have to stop thinking that as health delivery systems, this is gonna be solved as whack-a-mole or just doing individual projects. We need those, but we also need to innovate as how do we pull together a leadership and management system. Again, I call it this living and leading with love as a way to drive radical performance and scale it. The science of safety exists. The science of getting to zero and preventing patient harm exists. We need to operationalize the incorporation of these evidence-based practices into the daily routine and processes that our healthcare workers use every day. What's top of mind? It's cost pressure and not enough stuff. We need to do more with less. If we really make the business case stronger of safety, many things can happen. But the human is a critical element that is asked very few but very critical questions. Little data suffices, just a few data points. You don't need deep learning, you just need shallow learning. It's like, oh my God, the person hasn't eaten in two days. And this is a way in which you could just remind people in a very flat hierarchy to say, hey, consider sepsis. It's an option. Excellence is not an accident. It is the consequence of intentional leadership. We all want to work together to improve things. That's very special, and if you look at this, one of the uh, guiding principles, promote respect, dignity, compassion, and love in all actions and behaviors. How bold is that? When confronted by a serious threat to normal functioning, organizations that are resilient will bend, they won't break, they'll bounce back, and they'll adapt and grow quickly to meet the new challenges created by the crisis. Technology is changing. We can now get real data. We know what the outcomes are in hospitals and that's going to increase and it's going to be timely data. And we're all humans and we're all a little bit competitive. And I think uh, we react to data. If you show me my data is not as good as your data, I'm going to do something. And I think this is really going to make a difference. Sustaining improvements requires building capacity and capability such as teamwork, human factors training, leadership skills, data literacy, safety culture, monitoring and feedback. From my perspective, given the high numbers of sepsis deaths we have worldwide, which are higher than from cancer, the potential to reduce harm is enormous. We believe that quality and safety is actually the best path to achieving excellence. The words quality and safety, we're taking them back. They're not going to mean compliance anymore. They're going to mean excellence. And we need our movement here today for patient safety to be a global family. I think our next mission as a grassroots movement is to call the people in the office and demand for our local states, governments, to hardwire patient safety align the incentives so that every hospital puts the evidence-based practices in place. Stop believing that harm is inevitable and start believing that is entirely preventable. In other words, we could get to zero harm and we mean zero physical harm, zero suffering, zero waste, zero inequities. In